want to wish everyone a happy new year today on the epiphany and i want to welcome our guest amanda barker to the insomnia project our holiday episodes which are a little bit different than our regular episodes welcome amanda hi thanks for having me again this holiday as we wrap up i I feel like today is the last day you can wish someone a happy new year because it's the sort of epiphany so the last day of the holiday sort of technically speaking for the new year what's your take on that amanda well i don't uh, the epiphany was never anything i had ever heard of we spoke about boxing day last time i was here and uh same as boxing day the epiphany was something i would see on a calendar but had no explanation for so i actually don't really know anything i think about the epiphany other than today is called old christmas day in newfoundland and i think maybe some other parts of the world but i know in newfoundland it's called old christmas day well the epiphany is the day that the magi arrived with gifts supposedly for the baby jesus i don't know who the magi uh the three wise men oh yeah okay. so they're also called the magi and uh because of that a lot of the sort of christian world has a lot of you know festivals or, or lore that's associated with the epiphany for example you may have heard the bifana which in in italy is the christmas witch and she goes around on a broomstick handing coal or candies or fruit or presents to little kids in their stockings sort of like what santa claus does in a lot of north america and uh, other parts of the world that's what the bifana does and she always has a broom because she's a great housekeeper so she supposedly <laughs> will sweep up after herself oh, that's, i didn't realize that's why she had a broom i was wondering why a witch of all things would be associated with it with anything in the season but i suppose there's some truth to during the holidays you have you're entertaining you have guests over. I know we had sort of a steady stream of people sort of coming and going. It felt like I was putting a never-ending shrimp ring out every day. And so there is quite a bit of housekeeping and cleaning that goes along with that. I kind of like that idea too because... I see what you're saying. Yeah. So I love this idea of the new year being a fresh start, um, purging things that no longer serve you, there's this freshness that comes in the new year. Normally, I'm traveling. Um, we both are traveling this time of year. So I usually return home and immediately have things that I'd like to change, clean, make make new or make fresh, a new wallpaper, new bed, um, getting rid of clutter. Taking down Christmas or holiday decorations tends to lend itself to that because you there is so much extra in and around your house. So sure. there's something nice about that, I think. And you know, it's interesting you should mention that because traditionally the epiphany is the day that you take down your Christmas ornaments, your tree and whatnot, and you take all that down. So for those who are listening, who are doing that, I hope you're listening to this episode while you're taking down all your festive holiday things. Mm-hmm. It's sad. It's a, I, I find it maybe a bit of a sad time to deconstruct all that holiday cheer, but I'm trying not to look at it like that this year, and maybe we leave it all up a little longer. Okay, well, there you go. We won't be taking it down just yet, although they're collecting the tree, I think, on Thursday of this week, so we might we Okay, might maybe to... Wednesday night we will, but... <laughs> okay. Wednesday's a perfect day to be taking stuff down. <laughs> yes, the old hump day. We've been doing quite a bit of paper purging in this house uh, in the last week, which has been marvelous and really just condensing things, shredding documents, which is a nice way to begin the year, I think, just cleaning everything out. Getting rid of the old, making room for the new. As self-employed people, we really have a lot of paper, a lot of receipts. What's the oldest thing you found? In this recent purge? Yeah. And you've been watching that Maria Kondo um, show on... Tidying up yeah. with Maria Kondo or the Con Marie method. Marie Kondo, I think is her name. Yes. Um, which is a fabulous show to be purging to if you can sit with a box or a bin or a bag, whatever it is that you hold all of your extraneous receipts, bills, 
um, all of the above. For us, we have a lot of, I have a lot of um, programs of shows I've been in and I have call sheets of um, sets that I have been on, things I filmed. So it's hard purging some of that because there's happy memories. And sure. what I like about the Con Mary method is that it is okay to keep it. If it brings you a happy memory, hang on to it. But if it doesn't bring you a happy memory and you're holding on to something else, uh, maybe toss it. I think the oldest thing, just to answer your question, sure. that I found, well, there's things that were mine, they're old, and then I have a lot of inherited um, things. And so uh, I found a gift certificate I think from maybe the early 80s <laughs> for a restaurant that I believe still exists. It was dinner for two with a value of $20. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice restaurant. So um, that's why I think it, it looked particularly old, but there's no expiration date. So I plan on going and getting my $20 worth next time I'm at that restaurant. <laughs> there you go. So how was your... New Year's, Marco. Oh, it was great. It's To be honest with you, it's my favorite way to spend it. And that's with friends. Just having a casual little thing, sometimes playing games or just laughing and having fun rather than going out to a big party. That's not my thing for New Year's, mm -hmm. but just spending time with good friends. And that's how we did it this year. That is how we did it this year. Yeah, we've mm. had some interesting New Year's. I remember one a few years ago, we spent it on the beach, which was kind of fun um, in Florida. But this year... It felt right to just be very simple. And um, honestly, we had, I think, a cocktail. We sat around and talked about people we knew. Sure. And uh, just had a lovely discussion, and that was it. And then next thing we knew, it was 1230. And we said a Happy New Year about 20 minutes after the fact. And we laughed about that. And that was it. That was really our New Year's, which was nice and simple. I liked it. And how important is champagne for you on New Year's? Well, I guess not very important because we never got any this year. <laughs> we brought some over, but then oh, that's right. you made a... Well, we brought Prosecco over, which right. is the Italian answer to champagne, I think. <laughs> and um, I think people in champagne would disagree with you. Probably, yeah. Well, that's why I, that's why I qualified it. But... Um, I We brought it over, but we never opened the bottle. You made a cocktail. We drank the cocktail. I think we might have had another one at some point. And that was it. And then our friend's daughter, who's four, got up. She had had a nightmare. And uh, I asked her, would you like to spend time with mom and dad alone? And she nodded her head. So we left. <laughs> the, the little one kicked us out of the... She did. She, which it was fine. I mean, it was, I think already, it was like but, one o'clock yeah. in the morning. So it felt time anyway. Um, yeah. Do you make New Year's resolutions? Have you made any this year, Marco? I do. The last couple of years, I've made one simple resolution, and that's to floss my teeth every day. Because sometimes I brush every day, but I'll forget to floss. Or I'll, it's too cons time consuming. I'm tired. I want to go to bed. So I'll, I'll skip the flossing. But this year, I'm going to make a point of flossing every day without missing a day. That's my New Year's resolution. And I, our listeners have heard me talk about that in the past. And I want to add to that, I'm trying to wish everyone a happy birthday on Facebook every day oh. when it's their birthday. Because when I receive that, it's always so lovely to have your friends wish you a happy birthday and hear from people you haven't heard from. Mm -hmm. And I know how lovely it made me feel. So I'm trying to make a point of doing that because I know that there's some weeks where I'm like, I don't want to turn on the computer. I don't want to deal with Facebook. And so I'm going to try to make a point of wishing people a happy birthday on Facebook. That's a that's a great resolution, I think, because it's something that only m might take a minute out of your day, maybe two. And so it's a nice little change that you can make without a huge commitment in terms of lifestyle. And yet it's a habitual commitment. So I think that's a really great one. And you're bringing a little extra joy to the people in your life, whether it's people you know very well or in Facebook's case, maybe some very much not at all, Sure, um, which is kind of the fun part, I think, of Facebook or not, depending on how you feel about that. But I think those are the really great resolutions. I've never made the same resolution two years in a row. I, I, I guess for me, I try to think that I'm sticking to the resolution of the year prior. So last year, my resolution was to not have straws in my drinks. That's right. 
um, to not ask for them. I don't like them to start. I, I always take them out of the drink. So it's a double whammy because most people would say, and I would agree, they're not good for the environment. And there's no point for me to have them. So then why, why waste? Even if it's a paper straw, why waste it? I don't need it. Sure. I'm never going to drink a drink with it. I just take it out and pop it on the table. So um, now some restaurants are really fantastic at not serving them at all or serving paper straws or asking, but the majority of restaurants are not. I think they just pop them in your drinks. Um, and uh, so remembering to ask for that drink without a straw is is challenging. And I didn't do a great job at the beginning of the year, but actually as the year grew on and last year there was more attention to straws, right. it made it all a little bit more seamless. So I continue I continue with that. And what's your resolution this year? I have a few. And you're six days in. How has it been going? Oh, it's true. I have a few. Well, the first one is to learn more Italian. I don't plan on, you know, I'm not as ambitious to say I, I will become bilingual by the end of the year, but I have been using uh, an app that you and I have both used in the past called Duolingo. Um, it's a great app. It is a great yeah. app, and it's a fun way to um, learn a language. Uh, I'm trying to stay more off social media. For work reasons, I can't get it completely off my phone, but... Um, when I pick up my phone, I'd like for my first instinct to go and do, you know, answer a few questions in Italian, learn a few verbs or. For those of you who aren't familiar, it's like a five minute app that runs you through a lesson in whatever language you want or whatever language is available on that app. Mm -hmm. And it's visual, it's audio it has many different components to it, mm -hmm. and it's always sort of a bit different to keep you engaged with it. It's it's fun, and it's it's sort of a low risk way. I mean, you can get the app for free, so it really is all you're spending is a bit of time. And so I look at it as maybe not the sixty seconds that it would take to wish people happy birthday on Facebook, but about five to ten minutes. And again, I feel like that's a sustainable goal. I do have another goal this year too. Um, so it's kind of fitting that I'm sitting in this booth, our new booth here. And our new microphones. And our are. new microphones. Yeah. So a lot of new for 2019. And that is to help you in any way I can to make this podcast more sustainable mm -hmm. for us and for the listeners. So I guess that's a bit of a reach out for those who are listening not sleeping right now because this is a holiday episode so these have a slightly different tone as I think we've addressed um, if you have any ideas in terms of I do work in marketing and sponsorship and I have for a long time um, first with a food and beverage company years ago for seven years and and now I work with actually other podcasts and radio shows so if anybody has any um, fit that they think would be wonderful for this podcast um you know, any sleep related or relaxation related type of service that they would love to have included uh, or mentioned. Sure. I think a partnership or many partnerships, well, maybe not too many, but a few, a handful of very select curated partnerships would be a lovely fit for this podcast and for the other ones that you produce as well. That's right. Oh, my goodness. I feel like that's our mid-roll sort of advertisement looking for <laughs> uh, sponsors and people to promote the, the podcast. We are on Patreon, too. So if anybody mm -hmm. wants to check out patreon.com, the Insomnia Project, please feel free to do so. I have my Patreon receipts in my oh, file. <laughs> I came across them as I was purging all my paper, or sorting everything in the last few days. I, I have a few podcasts that I also donate to Patreon. So I've got to look for those mm -hmm. and just get my, that's another thing that I like to do around this time of year, especially if I can do it on the first or the second and that's just get to my taxes and just do mm -hmm. it off the top of the year. It makes me feel so good by the time April rolls around that I don't have to worry about them where other people are sort of scrambling. Perhaps we'll make it our mission to tackle that tonight mm -hmm. after dinner or maybe even before as we continue to clean and purge. And it's a great feeling, really, just to sort. You feel lighter. Mm -hmm. I'm about to trade a huge armload of magazines for a bottle of wine. Somebody's coming to the house and 
in an, in very soon, actually, in the next hour. And uh, that's going to feel great, just purging all of uh, those magazines. We get a lot of magazines in this household. And what's interesting is, so I love magazines. My wife loves magazines. I love magazines. And your mother <laughs> loves magazines. So it's almost like something that I see in your family. Does your sister like magazines? She does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, magazines have actually been, I realize now, it's it makes sense that I have such a love of magazines. Why because, is that? Well, when we were young, it was the first to get a mat to be old enough to get a magazine your own magazine subscription was just this wonderful gift and my sister and I each were allowed to pick one magazine that we wanted to have it all year long um i don't it was just a special sort of gift you're ready i think sure. when we were like you know 12 and um, so that was very exciting because she had her magazine that I wasn't allowed to look at. Oh, what magazine was that? Seventeen. Okay. Magazine. Oh, so she was a late starter for getting a magazine. Well, out. no, I mean she oh. was probably thirteen when oh, okay, she had I see. it. Okay. But it's that's, called seventeen. Okay. It's called seventeen. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. But she was thirteen, probably sure. maybe even twelve when she got it. And mine was Young Miss magazine. Oh. Good old yeah. Young Miss. I loved Young Miss. I read it cover to cover, cover to cover, and over again. Is it still around, Young Miss? I don't, I don't know actually. Okay. And then she graduated from seventeen to Jane Magazine. You mm, might remember. No, no, idea. you don't remember no. Jane. Well, I think if you're a woman in my age range, and I'll just open that age range to mid thirties to mid forties. Um, you probably would remember Jane. Actually, the precursor to Jane, I should say, and this was the magazine. So she went from 17 to the magazine. It was called Sassy. Okay. Sassy magazine. Now, you laugh, but I have to tell you, it was actually quite a revolutionary magazine. Okay. It was a wonderful magazine. It 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 was a voice for young women that we didn't have. So it would talk about Lou Reed. It would oh, talk okay. about alternative music. It would talk about alternative fashion. It would talk about things like sustainability, which a magazine comparable like a Young Miss or definitely a Teen Beat, which was just heart throbs and face masks. Right. Um, it offered a completely different alternative to that for a young woman. So it was actually quite. And then the editor of that magazine, her name was Jane. And so then she came out with Jane magazine later. But I forgot that the precursor was actually sassy. So that's why we love magazines in my house. But then I have another reason on top of that mm -hmm. to love magazines. And that was I lived in Korea. And I think I've talked about that before. And so in Korea, reading material, English reading material was a very, very hot commodity. Sure. So an in-flight magazine, a catalog, anything you could get your hands on, because this was 1998. So um, anything that you could get your hands on, you did. And so we would trade them, too. Right. So they were very hot properties back then. So what are you reading magazine-wise? Oops, I just hit the microphone. What are you reading magazine-wise now? I have a nice mixture. I like a mixture of – I'm pretty typical, I think. I love design magazines. Mm -hmm. um, nothing too – too chic, but just sustainable design magazines. I love lifestyle magazines. So like Canadian Living and Chatelaine, I've always been fans of. Um, I love food magazines. So right. I have a subscription to Bon Appetit <laughs> magazine. Uh, and I love travel magazines. Although I don't think I have any travel per se magazines happening right now. But and I know you love the magazine that gives the top 10 picks of restaurants or cool eats in the city. Those are your fit. You look forward to I those I should ones. say Toronto Life because I do live in Toronto. Um, and you and you had something published in Toronto Life. I do, yeah. And actually Toronto Life is probably the favorite magazine of the bunch right now for me if I had to pick. Um, although I love them all, so that's really hard to say. It depends on the day. But Toronto Life is great because they have the top 100 restaurants in Toronto, the top spas, the top places to shop or best burgers. You know, they do lots of those. And I and I I'm a fan. I'm a Virgo. So I'm a fan of organization and lists and, you know, those types of carpet carp compartmentalization of of subjects. So. It's a great magazine. It has quite a bit of variety in every in every issue. And it just is well well organized like they do a great job of 
putting that magazine together. I know and that I, sounds strange, but they uh, do. And I think in the past, I've heard pushback from friends saying that it's maybe too elitist, but I think they've really responded to that mm -hmm. and uh, tried their absolute best to diversify their stories. All right. We've mentioned our favorite magazines, or you've mentioned your favorite magazines. I want to mention podcasts because this is a podcast and I always love hearing podcasters tell me when I'm listening to their podcast or tell the listeners what podcast they're into these days. Mm -hmm. So so why don't you tell me? Okay. So, well, we I'm, I'm fortunate because I've had some of my favorite podcasters in the studio. Mm -hmm. So we both know Bill and Tanui, and he has Bad Gay Movies and My Criterion. And I've been tearing through My Criterion at the gym as well. It's about 24 to 30 minutes of his take on the Criterion collection of films. Mm -hmm. And um, he's such a scholar when it comes to movies. But just listening to him talk about that and how it relates to his life is really entertaining and really educational, too. Mm -hmm. So that's the, that's one of my favorite uh, podcasts. And you've been on Bad Gay Movies. I have, yeah. I, I've, uh, I saw... A movie called Oy Vey, My Son is Gay, mm -hmm. and then I had to review it. That was an awful, awful piece of cinema, but mm -hmm. it was a fun podcast. Yeah. Another one, of course, that I, I've been on, and you know very well, is The Humble and Fred Show. Mm -hmm. That's a comedic one, and it's got a little bit of, you know, sassiness to it for any listeners who might be like, oh, I'll check that one out. Well, full disclosure, I am one of the producers of The Humble and Fred Show. Uh, and I've been a voice on that show and a co-host, I guess, um, since 2014. Wow. So I've been there a long time. Um, I have a really lovely uh, partnership with them that I really enjoy. I'm there. I'm not there for every podcast. I go in two th to three times a week. Uh, but I do produce all the podcasts in terms of guests, marketing, sponsorship, and we broadcast out of a studio on the Queensway in Toronto. So that's Etobicoke. One of my favorite podcasts as well is based out of Los Angeles, and it's called Breaker Slash Broken. Mm -hmm. And you got to put that all together. So it's Breaker Slash Broken. No Breaker space. Broken. Breaker yeah. Broken. Sorry. It's called Breaker Broken. Yeah. But break. Yeah. You don't have to write out slash. slash. No, it's the actual slash key. And Breaker Broken is significant for us for so many reasons. Our dear friend, Michelle Miracle, and her husband, Nima Karazzi. Um, I haven't said his last name, I don't think, ever. Mm -hmm. You kind of <laughs> gave it an Italian spin to it. Did I? You said Karazzi. Karazzi. It's, uh, it's Karazzi. Karazzi? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, he, uh, that, that's their podcast that they do together, and it's a really f beautiful story, actually, mm -hmm. of how that came to be. They broke up, mm -hmm. and they were very much in love. And for reasons that they can explain in the podcast, they broke up. She was devastated. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think he was too. And uh, it's actually one of, the, in a way, one of the most beautiful blessings because my friendship with her is a completely stronger friendship as a result of this breakup. I speak to her every week, if not every day. Um, we both spend a lot of time in our cars driving from job to job sure. and life event to life event. And that is when we talk to each other on an app called Voxer. Voxer is another great app. We're just giving you our, our, our best our, apps. Our list of favorite <laughs> things. It's a great podcast if you know someone who's going through a breakup or you're going through a mm -hmm. breakup and you want to hear stories of other people and how they got through it. Yeah. And what's it's on very, the other side. Very inspiring. Yeah. And just a reminder uh, of your favorite quote by Leonard Cohen. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'll let you say it. There's a crack, a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. And yeah. it's just a beautiful theme that runs throughout that podcast mm -hmm. and a reminder that no matter what you're going through, there is that the only way out is through. Mm -hmm. And that on the other side of that, there's hope. It's a beautiful podcast. Another podcast I love, which is based out of Victoria, British Columbia, is called Nautilus at Nine. And it's a short podcast. And I always like having a repertoire of shorter podcasts on my playlist because sometimes you'll listen to an hour podcast and you just need a little something to sort of, you know, shake things up and not feel like you're you know, so tied to a long podcast. So Nautilus at Nine is a great comedic sci-fi podcast for people who are into that. And if you're not, it's still just a great mm -hmm. little 
podcast, and I don't say little as far as reach or how much, how great it is, but rather short podcast. So check out Nautilus at Nine, another short podcast that you've been on, which I'm the director and producer of, is called Every Place is the Same. And I only mention it because I know it sounds very self-serving. It sounds like, oh, look at him. He's talking about his other podcasts on his podcast. But I just want to give a shout out because we were just nominated for a Canadian Podcast Award for Best Personal best personal or outstanding personal series. So we'll let you know on that podcast. And actually in February. Break, break or broken was also nominated for, for best or outstanding foreign podcast. Cause it's a Canadian podcast award, yeah. but very fortunately or in, in such a lovely way, PodCamp that does it PodCamp Toronto, who sponsors the awards has a foreign category, which is so nice because oftentimes when you look at these awards, award shows, they, they stay within their own nation or their mm-hmm. own place. And other people who are fans can't enter. Mm-hmm. But I think it's really great that they do have a foreign. Yeah. Um, so congratulations yeah. to both of those podcasts. And actually, I was going to talk about Every Place is the okay. Same because it is one of my favorite podcasts. I absolutely love it. As a former debater from high school, I um, I love drawing the alignment between two things and and arguing my case and the 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 thought process that goes into that and the improvisational nature of that show is really lovely and just a fun time and it's 10 minutes which I enjoy because I enjoy uh, something that's sort of low commitment in the podcast world. (laughs) Um, And so I wasn't sure if I was allowed to mention that one. So I'm glad that you did. Yeah. Well, let us know what your favorite podcasts are, too, and we'll put them up on our um, Instagram and Twitter. We'll just say this is one of our listeners' favorite podcasts. I want to thank you for listening to this podcast, for enjoying the holiday episodes, because we've been getting some great feedback on them and how people are enjoying them, even though they're a little bit outside of the sort of norm Insomnia Project feel. Mm -hmm. So let us know about that, I guess. Let Marco know about that. And also, again, reach out if you have any partnership ideas, opportunities, friends, or companies that you think, oh, that would be a great alignment, a great fit. And you could message Marco at drumcastproductions at gmail.com as well I want to mention season 3 will be coming out in the spring we're working on a bunch of exciting things for that Amanda and with our new studio and these new mics I just perceive it as being an even better show than it is I want to send love to all the listeners for 2019 I think this is going to be a really special beautiful whole year (laughs) and I have to say I feel like we have the best listeners in the podcast world. The uh, emails and Twitter and Instagram feedback that we get from them is just so tremendous, just so touching. And I want to thank all of you for that because it can really brighten my day when I do get that. So thank you and continue to rate, review and subscribe. Tell your friends about the Insomnia Project. Thank you for listening. And I want to wish all the listeners a happy, healthy prosperous 2019 with pleasant and wonderful sleep throughout indeed as always the insomnia project is produced by drumcast productions and this particular episode was recorded in our home studio in toronto canada until next time